من آل قرآني حفظتم آية رحماني وفضلتم تلاوته Perfect. Well, I'll start. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam ala rasulillah. Uh, Imam Sa'adi first wrote the poem, the 18 lines or the 18 stanzas, couplets. And then at some short date, he just put a few notes to it. Um, so he now starts the actual poem. So Imam Sa'adi, rahmatullah, or our author, rahimullah ta'ala, said, سعيد الذين تجنبوا سبل الردى وتيمموا لمنازل رضواني. Fortunate are those who avoid the destructive paths intending the station of Allah's good pleasure. And simply, uh, I think Imam Sa'di kind of gets to the point there in his own explanation. Uh, and I'll just read that, and I think it's really, really um, on point. I mean, if we just bear in mind uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the 42nd chapter of the Qur'an, مَنْ كَانِ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِدْ لَهُ فِي حَرْثِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيب Whoever aspires to the harvest of the hereafter, of the afterlife, we grant him an increase in his harvest. But whoever aspires to the harvest of this worldly life, we grant him something of it, but in the afterlife, he shall have no share. Meaning we should be working towards Allah and the Akhirah, even though we live in the dunya. And unlike certain other religious spiritual traditions, who expect their followers to tiptoe around the world and not get involved in worldly things and the, and the, 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 the desires of the flesh or, 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 because it's all bad. Islam does not expect us. And the Sunnah makes it explicit. We don't tiptoe around the world. We go through the world. And we utilize the world. And we engage the world. Okay, and we enjoy in a halal way its pleasures without being distracted from our goal to Allah and without forgetting to be thankful for the joys and pleasures and delight and without making them the be all and the end all but as a means to a greater goal. Our tradition is we live in this world. The prophets, alayhi wasalatu wasalam, were not sent to people in caves or mountaintops. In fact, our story is, it starts from the mount, the revelation came to the mountaintop only so that he, so awesome, can go back to the people and at an eventual point tell everybody. I mean, it might have started with a few people, but eventually it had to go public. Yes, for sure. There might be some prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam, who at some point in their dawah uh, and their nubuwa, prophethood, whatever, had to flee to the mountains or the hills. But it wasn't because that's where the message belonged. And that's why the Quran says, never did we send a messenger except from the people of the towns. Meaning, Tawheed is a call to to the urban people, to people in towns and villages and cities, not in caves and mountaintops. Because it's Tawheed, it's medicine. It's no good having healing medicine. But you're kind of, I got the cure for COVID, but it's okay. I'm on a mountaintop, nobody knows, and I'm not going to give it to anybody. It's not kind of really any point then, is there? Might as well not have the cure. And Tawheed is that issue for Okay. Fortunate are those who avoid the destructive paths intending the station of Allah's good pleasure. And Imam Sa'di himself says, this is the foundation of their path and their spiritual course uh, 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 and the principal course of their party, meaning the, the party of those who journey to Allah. In that, and here's the point, they avoid the paths of spiritual loss and anguish and intend the paths of Allah's good pleasure. They avoid the paths of shaitan and intend to be worshippers of the most merciful. They avoid the paths of the blazing 
blazing fire and intend the paths of, paths of eternal bliss. They abandon evil and they do good. They keep their hearts, tongues and limbs away from the haram and repugnant actions and instead busy themselves with obligatory and praiseworthy actions. They adorn themselves with beautiful character and purge themselves of all reprehensible traits. There, in a nutshell, is the path. In a nutshell, there, that is the path. Uh, I think Salih or Abdullah, one of the two sons of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, Rahmatullah alayhi, asked, the, asked the father, the son asked the father, Imam, uh, Imam Ahmed, um, what advice do you give me? He said, oh my son, if you can, then always intend good in your heart. Always make the heart intend good. When the heart's intention is to do good, either in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mathalan, or in our relationship with others, subhanAllah, that's three quarters of the spiritual path sorted, bi'idhnillah. It is a blessing of blessings. We're not looking, right, to cheat someone. We're not looking to misadvise someone. We're not looking to put someone down. We're not looking to see if we can trick God. We're not, we just want to do good. We just want to do good. The mother who says, no, she's not a mother now. The sister who says, you know what, inshallah, I'll get married, uh, have a decent husband, half decent husband. If he's a saint, then that's better. A half decent is good. It's probably what you're going to get nowadays from our start. <laughs> um, and if Allah blesses me with children, I want to bring them up in the reverent worship and remembrance of Allah. Whether that sister has children or not, from the day she makes that, and it, let's say it's a truthful intention, not something she thought of in her sleep, something she really intends. From the day she makes that intention, Allah starts rewarding her. And as she's doing this, as the, now she's a mother, right? As she's doing this, all right? And nowadays the, the father is also involved. Okay, you come from my generation or Brother Shabir's generation. We, we weren't really, um, I mean, not to us as individuals, but our generation, we weren't hands, men weren't hands on parents. Um, just wasn't kind of, society didn't expect that, women did, whatever. But, you know, from the 90s, late 90s onwards, it's like men and women hands on, for sure. So if you see me say things slightly outdated, just kind of in your mind, just contextualize it, okay? Uh, but let's just stick with the old traditional thing. The, 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 from the time that sister says that, Allah rewards her. And it doesn't matter how the children turn out. If, this, if, if the mother has just done her best to lay down the right things, God forbid the children could turn out to be, you know, an axe murderer. But the mother is rewarded. Can you imagine the reward she gets in Jannah? What daraja? Because every day, every hour she gets reward because that's what she wanted to intend actions by intentions one could imagine giving not you giving thousands thousands away of pounds away in charity events and it still wouldn't reach that because that's an every second of the day every day of the you know of the children's at least young life subhanallah why because the intention is such a powerful thing so if today and i'm sure it's already done we intend to be people of goodness with good intentions for everything and everybody. That doesn't mean smiling all the time. Oh, he's cursing Allah. <laughs> no, it just means intend good. The way that Allah wants us to intend good. Subhanallah, then we become mubarak and fihi, blessed wherever we are. Okay, because we see that old lady in the street. I'm driving in the car and we just see this old lady in the street struggling with her bag. And with her. It's like, ya yeah, Allah, if, you know. Make it easy for her, or hope someone on the street helps her. Just the intention, we don't even make a dua. That's subhanAllah. And the change, the change is happening. Okay.
So, Sayyid al ladina tajannabu subul or rada, fortunate are those who avoid the destructive paths, whatever paths that may be. Doing haram, falling into a major bid'ah, a bid'ah that is agreed upon to be a bid'ah, and reprehensible innovation that is agreed upon by the jurist to be a reprehensible, uh, or by the scholar to be a reprehensible innovation, not a valid difference of opinion. And so one who does that, okay, one who doesn't do it, there's one thing, one who does it, oh, they, they've done a bid'ah, they're deviant Muslims. No. What kind of misguidance is this? If it's a legitimate, valid, legitimate difference of opinion by a valid classical scholar, it's all difference of opinion. When it goes against a, a scholarly consensus or an ijma, then it becomes outside of orthodoxy, outside of the, 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 the proper term is Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and becomes um, misguided Islam, or worse, depending upon how misguided it is, it could be outside of Islam. Tasbih beads, it's not a bid'ah. In fact, we don't know of any scholar until recently, literally recently, who said it's a bid'ah. To say it's a bid'ah is a bid'ah. There's just a difference between the jurists. Is it preferred to count on the hands or using an aid, like, a bead, like beads? And then they differ after that as well. Even those who say preferred to count on the hands, they say, what happens if someone is used to doing a thousand, five hundred, <coughs> or something like that? Doing 33, 33, 33, most of us are taught when we're young how to count that. You start doing 500 or, you know, more dhikr, and you want to make that a consistent habit, then they differ on that. Even those who say using the hands is better will say, well, when it comes to those type of numbers, maybe you should use a counting device so that you can keep your spiritual regime intact. We don't know of any classical scholar who said it's a bid'ah. And yet today, people judge that to be right, right guidance and misguidance. So avoid the destructive paths, the haram. Okay, there are things that are agreed upon to be haram, then there are things that are haram in the school that we follow, in the fixed school that we follow. Uh, uh, for example, uh, <coughs> there is an obligation, well it's not haram actually. Uh, for example, if, if, a, if, if a Hanbali who believes to stick to the school uh, doesn't say uh, between sajdas, Allah maghfili, Allah maghfili twice, or words to that effect, then they left an obligation. Although it's not haram if they unintentionally leave it, forgetful it then they've left a, an obligation, but they're not sinful. If they intentionally leave it, their prayer is valid, but it's haram. They've done a haram in prayer. The rest of the madhahib don't have that as an obligation. Some of the madhabs don't even have that as a recommendation. Whatever is haram, from the clear cut or per, per my own school, avoid. Whatever is bid'ah, agreed upon, avoid. Whatever might be bid'ah within my own school, avoid, but it might not be bid'ah in someone else's school. That's fine. It's a legitimate difference of opinion. Intend good, don't intend ill. For anybody. Love, them, love our Muslim brothers, sisters, love good for the non-Muslims. What good for the non-Muslims? Ideally, that they come to Islam. But it could be, you know, that non-Muslim old lady, I hope that she has money to pay for her eating bill in winter, for example. Why? Because that's how the Prophet Sassam was. I wish I had a million pounds to give you. I don't have a million, but I have the intention. Not give to your brother, which you can give to yourself, because sometimes I have a good car, and I can't give you a good car because I don't have enough money. But I love for my brother what I love for myself. I wish that you too would have something that pleases you in terms of a car, or a vehicle, or whatever. And when the heart is like that, subhanAllah, it's, there's a nur, there's a difference between that kind of superficial Islam that most of us kind of are kind of satisfied with, and the real deal, right? SubhanAllah. So that's aspiration. Let's have spiritual ambition. I really want to be a person of beauty. I really want to be a person of goodness. Why? Because that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ was. 
no more or no less. And I remember the point I was trying to make, high culture. The Prophet ﷺ had high culture. I mean, it, small things. I'm not talking about major, major sunnahs here, small things. He saw Aslam, if he was walking and he, someone was behind him and they would call him, he saw some would actually then turn his whole self to the person. But it's okay to just do that. Yeah, I'll see you later. Okay? But he saw some would do that because it's high culture. The process doesn't do mediocrity. Because Allah, in Allah, katabal ihsan ala kulli shay. In Allah, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Allah has prescribed excellence in all that you do. We want to be people of beauty. In Allah, jamilun yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. We're not talking about superficial beauty, that counts too, but inward beauty of beliefs. Tawheed iman, Ahlul Sunnah, uh, and beauty of character and conduct, but also beauty of aspirations and intentions. Right? Uh, and once we have that as our base, okay, as our true north, then even the mistakes we make, Allah will bless them to be less destructive in our lives or in society. Because it came from a good place. But it's still a mistake. It needs to be corrected and not, or avoided. But it's come from a good place. But when mistakes come from a bad place, it's already destroying the soul. And it's probably not going to have any barakah. But mistakes can have barakah if they come from a good place. Which is why Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, when you start seeing religious schisms between people, splits and all that kind of thing, it's not because of the ijtihad, the scholarly, uh, legitimate scholarly view each are following. Schisms never come through true and valid scholarly ijtihad or opinion, because Allah blesses it. It might be wrong or it might be right, one reward, two reward, always blessed, never a sin. The schisms come because of extremism, jealousy, bigotry, partisanship, and all these other things that causes the schism, Ibn Taymiyyah says. So when it comes from a good place, even our mistakes can be less harmful to our own souls, let alone Muslim communities. When, it, when we don't, it doesn't come from a good place, that's something else, meaning Let's start trying to wake up in the morning with, Ya Allah, keep my heart with good intentions, whatever intentions that manifest, they may manifest as. If we can just do this, Alhamdulillah, we would have benefited from uh, this book, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. That's simple.